Good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Today is May the 2nd, 2017. Today is Tuesday, and it is 9.51 in the a.m., family. And just got out the shower, put on me some clothes, because I'm going to the fish market to go get me some fish. So, um... I came on to just simply say, what's up? It's a video day in May. So every day, literally, we're going to be coming on here and talking about something. Something. So it's like, I was like really trying to, like, which route do I want to take on today? Because we have been literally talking about so many things. Let me get comfortable. Can I get comfortable for me? Let me get comfortable. And so we have been literally talking about so many different things and so it's like okay so what do we talk about today what do we discuss today so there's a few things that i like to discuss but let's first start off with love and hip-hop can we talk love and hip-hop for a minute now i watched love and hip-hop last night i hadn't been really <clears throat> excuse me I hadn't been really watching it like i used to because it has really gotten just off the mark for me I can't really, at first I could identify with some of the women on the show, um, but then after a while it started taking a twist that I couldn't keep up with no more. I mean, it just became just everybody doing everybody, and I mean, it's just it, it just took on a twist that I couldn't keep up with, honestly. And see, and I've always had a liking for Mimi. I've always had a liking for, oh, I really like, um... Uh, uh, Waka's, Waka Flocka, or whatever the shit his name is. I like his wife. I really like her. Um, and who else I really, oh, and I like, uh, the one that's married to this motherfucker with the baby on the way. I like Rashida. Um, uh, now Carly Red. Now see, what's so cold about it is all of us are all around the same age. And that's one reason why I guess I could somewhat relate to them. Now, that's the only thing that I feel as though I might have in some type of common bond with these ladies is the fact that we're mothers, we're in the same age group, and that's pretty much it. Because the promiscuity, I don't know nothing about, I can't. Man, and I was really liking Carly Red, y'all. I was really liking Carly Red at first, but now it's like this motherfucker is fucking with all these different niggas that I just cannot keep up with. And I'm like, okay, this is where I'm at with it now, okay? Because I also understand that this is softly scripted. And so um, a lot of these reality shows now are... Uh, being a ghost writer, I know a little bit about something that, you know, and, and but, uh, you know, just put it that way. I know a little bit about something. So I also understand and know that um, we are governed under uh, what is called a poetic license. Now, oh, shout out to Writers Guild. Um, 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 so the strike did not go down. There was a settlement reached. And so... Um, things going to continue as, as they've been going. But for me, I thought, it, I, I was like, wow, if it's going to be a writer strike, especially for the, the freelancers like me that be working underground and people just contact you and be like, you know what? We need some funny shit said on this right here. You don't get much credit or nothing like that, but the pay is some, it's a, the pay is sometimes good depending on the project. And, um, and I have done that on some really cool things that I've just, man, and it has really paid off. And, you know, the perks was cool. The pay was cool. And so with this writer's uh, strike that was getting ready to happen and the settlement been, been reached. But at first it was like it was a touch and go. And it was going to really affect the way TV was going. So um, I don't want to get into all that. But just with such background and knowing a little bit about that life, I do know that a lot of the reality shows now are softly scripted. The realest motherfucking one was Keisha Cole and them. Keisha Cole and them was the realest motherfucking shit that you had ever seen in fucking life. Besides cops back in the day, okay? That motherfucking Keisha Cole and them, them motherfuckers, they came to... Nephi them, oh my God. Them motherfuckers there, oh my God. That's why I don't understand 
Mama, after all of this y'all had going on, all these different shows and spinoffs and all this shit that y'all had going on, what the fuck did you do with the money? I know that it doesn't pay that much money unless you're on a recurring season to season to season pickup show. A lot of shows aren't picked up season to season to season. A lot of these people aren't making the money that you think that they're actually making. Some of them are still in a thousand year type get down. They're not making millions. Now, some are making millions. Nene is up there in the million bracket range when it comes down to a season and whatnot. But there are some that are not making the millions. They're just still thousandaires. So, and then you're governed under what is called a poetic license. So, which means anytime you're dealing anything in the, in the entertainment sector, um, you pretty much can say and do some dumb shit and it's considered as acting, it's considered as the craft and, you know, it's pretty much a watch because it's, it basically is looked upon as fictional, okay? So, with that said, and I'm looking at Carly Red and the rest of these motherfuckers on the show and, um, the one had the baby last night. Oh my God, that was a good part, that was so good at the show, the way that was edited um, I love the editing process, too, being a, a, a background cat. The editing on that was so cool. I was looking at the camera angles. When I'm looking at TV, I, I, I just don't look at what they're saying because I also look at the craft on the acting and all that kind of stuff. But I also look at the camera angles. I also look at um, the way that things are edited. Now, I know what y'all are saying. Well, Auntie, how come your shit ain't on 10? Because I can't do all that. I can't do all that. Okay, and nor do I have the money to be paying somebody to do my shit every time I upload these motherfuckers. I, I, I just I just can't. This has worked for me to work with a little flip camera. It don't have no extra this, that, no extra zoom, no none of that shit. But this works for me. You know what I'm saying? Now I, I, I do I do have what it what I need. I got an old ass motherfucking Canon Rebel that ain't that ain't got no mileage on that motherfucker. I know now they probably own motherfucking Canon Rebel goddamn 911 or something. I don't know what they own now. But shit, my shit still got all the paperwork. Shit, I still got lens caps and all that shit on that motherfucker because I don't know how to use it. So then therefore I stay within my comfort zone and you can't grow in comfort. I know I need to push past that and work with what I need, but it's just hard for me. Okay, it's hard for me. Let me take baby steps on where in which I'm trying to go. I'm working on so many aspects of my life. I, 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 I'm getting overwhelmed. And I'm not going to be able to get everything right. It's like, okay, I worked on the fitness part. I worked on my weight loss part. Okay, boom, I conquered that. Now it's like, okay, now I'm on to something else. I'm working on that diligently. Okay, boom, I'm almost conquering that. I've been working on this right here and pretty much conquering that. Okay, boom. You know, so I'm like working on different things. And... I'm a Virgo, too, to go with it. So, whereas I'll stop, start, stop, start shit and fuck with my creativity, and I'm just blown at that point in time. Anyway, loving hip-hop, because I know I'm about to go two or three other motherfucking places, and that's not what we're doing. We're talking loving hip-hop. Man, Carly Red, oh, my God. And it's like, okay, when I saw her with life, I was like, okay, that's a pretty cool look. You going back and forth with Jock and how many more motherfuckers you was on there fucking with? If, if I was Rashida, by Rashida being the married one on the show, by me also being Waco's wife, Tammy, I would really be concerned about some of these bitches on this motherfucking show because they ain't got no problem with sharing beds and stuff. They ain't got no problem with sharing beds and sharing, sharing alike. Ain't no fun if the homie can't have none. I don't know what the fuck this other motherfucker... That motherfucker look like a club kid. Anime. She look like straight anime. It's a little Asian chick on there now. I don't know where the fuck this motherfucking cartoon came from. But this bitch right here, she doesn't she doesn't seem authentic to me. She seemed like something like on anime or some type of cartoon character or, or something. She got a little work done. She got the Nicki Minaj package. It looks nice. Whatever the hey, you got disposable income, how you supposed to look? So she got what she wanted. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, she coming in here messy than a motherfucker because here she told this other woman, now beautiful lady. Oh, my God. Now that was, I don't know who this other sister is that was beautiful as fuck that I seen because I think I seen the end of one show and then some other shit came on. 
Or maybe I was turning back and forth yesterday. And a few of that shit came on. But I saw this anime motherfucker tell this other chick about her husband sleeping with her goddamn assistant. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on on TV? Nigga, I mean, these motherfuckers is really... I mean, I, I'm like, okay, I don't know. Because back in those days when I was young and married, and if somebody was all that overt with... Nigga, we be... I understand why these motherfuckers be fighting. I really do. I, I, I kind of understand it. You know, the younger mentality on the fighting. But, at a certain age, you need to know when to, okay, bitch, okay, I see what this is. I'm just cool on you. I'm just not fucking with you no more. You know what I'm saying? But in your 40s, damn near 50, Tammy and all them motherfuckers, Tammy rolling is what I'm saying. Y'all motherfuckers too old to be fighting. It just don't even look right no more. That shit is just so disgusting to me now. I mean, Shani, listen. I love you, love your show, love what you got going. But you and Mona Scott need to stop with all these old ass motherfuckers on here on these goddamn shows fighting and shit. And I'm not saying old motherfuckers like that, because I'm in the same age group. We all around the same age group. We're not considered as old motherfuckers theoretically. But I'm just saying no. When you get a certain age, there's certain things you should not be doing. And on there the way these motherfuckers is fighting, the way Tammy is ready to roll up on motherfuckers, and then Jack Jackie. Anyway, love and hip-hop. I don't know what Carly Red got going because now, okay, now she had the pop-up shops and all this. She got the stores and whatever she got going. What is with the sleeping of all these motherfucking dudes, though? Because it don't look good to me, mama. It just don't look good. Not to me. Now, now, some people might be like, girl, shit, hey, shit, fuck that, fuck that nigga. Get that nigga. Get, do this. I'm just not cut from that. You know what I'm saying? I'm more of a girl that want to just be in one relationship and that's it. it it's a one-on-one. -on -one. We doing each other. We having fun with it. Nigga, we hanging upside down on some shit. Nigga, get it. You don't get, nigga, if you don't get this, get it, nigga. Get it, get I'm one of them. Okay? I'm one of them. So it's like, why in the fuck would I... If, if I'm doing it like that with the one that I love... And, and I equate... I know, I know I'm, I'm getting ready to <laughs> sound a little nostalgic... But I'm one that I create that type of, you know, intimacy with somebody that you genuinely care about. Because I can't disconnect like that. So I can't give myself to nobody. Just anybody? Just be fucking niggas? Nah, I, I, I can't do it. So to see these motherfuckers on here so cavalier with it, it's a turnoff to me. Now, this young lady pulled up with the blonde hair beanie on. The thick sister, her hus her husband is sexy as a motherfucker. I don't really, I, 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 don't, I you know, I've never really uh, talked to a man with dreads or nothing like that. I never dated a man with dreads or nothing like that. But um, this is a sexy motherfucker. When he get on the show, I don't know, I don't even know. I think she called him Skeeter or some shit. I don't know what the shit she called him. But I was like, God damn, now y'all got some good looking motherfuckers on here. Because, God damn, he's a sexy motherfucker. His wife, I guess that's his wife. She's a beautiful young lady. I don't know what the hell. See, and I guess, let me also say this. Because one reason why I don't have a problem with being a loner and just get up with my girls every now and then again. We got a mutual respect for one another. They ain't around all the time, no motherfucking time. They on location in Canada. This, 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 this. So it's ever so often that we can come together or it's like in sporadic. Okay, girl, let's meet up for lunch. Or, you know, and see, I live kind of in the boondock, so for motherfuckers to come out my way, you know what I'm saying, it's kind of far and in between. But when it go down, it goes down. <laughs> it's like, girl, I'm going to come pick you up. We're going out to Tina's house. It's like that. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got to go pick somebody else up because they like, shit, bitch, we ain't driving two or three cars to this motherfucker. Nigga, you was in the boondocks, okay? So, but... <laughs> When I saw this motherfucker, and then she pulled up and she was like, d stepped out the car with, are we really sleeping together? Did you tell your wife we were sleeping together? I was like, oh my God, what is going on with these shows nowadays? And this young lady looked no more than about maybe 19, 20 years old. 22 tops. And I'm like, oh my God. And now the, 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 the wife, I don't know how old she was, but she kept it kind of classy, which she was going to yank some shit off this motherfucker, which I understood that too. But it was like, wow, is this is what these young ladies, these high school young ladies, this is what they're watching. 
<coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I'm choking like a motherfucker. Hold on. <coughs> is this what these young ladies that are in college, this is what they're watching? I want to get on reality TV because I want to show the fuck out. I want to get on reality TV because I want to fuck all these niggas. I want to get on reality TV because I want to be out here just on some old ratchetness. Nigga, this shit look crazy, Mona. But I understand that. It's about money. It's about poetic license. And it's about, I'm not out there cutting up. They out there cutting up. I get these motherfuckers drunk, put them in certain situations, and let it, let's just let it go. Now, just like this other one that's coming out with the beard thing. Man, she looks so goddamn. Did you see the way the man was looking at her when she was up there talking to him? He was like, okay, bitch, this is just a scene we doing. I I don't, I don't know you from no motherfucking body. You know what I'm saying? And what are you talking about? I mean, she was standing up there talking to this guy about the liquor. Y'all, just look at their candor. Look at her motherfucking outfit. What were you wearing? What are you doing? And then the other one come in. Now, she look every bit of 55. I don't know how old she is, but I know we all around about the same. But this motherfucker came in with her shit all split up and her shit looking twisted up. And I'm like, wow, what is going on on Love and Hip Hop? I'm not understanding this. I, I, I'm out the loop. Maybe I done missed too many episodes of where I don't know what's going on. Maybe that's the case. And then it fuck around and it went off and it came back with the tattoo show and Carly Red over there fucking the motherfucker on that show. And I'm like, oh my God. What the hell is going on? Then I watch Mimi apparently was sleeping with the, the chick that worked. I guess she worked at the club. I don't know when she came in on the show. But now she's in on the show where they had all the time, and now she getting cocky as a motherfucker. I guess she said, I done been on four or five motherfucking episodes. Now let me get a voice. I got a voice. Let me speak. You know, because she was coming off on Mimi like, uh, you know, bitch, you already know what it is. You already know I ate your pussy. I ate your, your partner pussy too, shit. Bitch, what you mad for? I'm like, oh, my God. They got that whole, they got the whole set over there in Atlanta looking crazy. I'm just, I'm just saying, they got the whole set in Atlanta looking crazy than motherfucker, and it's like I'm seeing the same seven motherfuckers being rotated around between the same two or three niggas. I'm not understanding this. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't like the fact that Bambi and Scrap couldn't do their thing, but it's. Excuse me, it's almost like he just want to play games. That's the way it looked like to me. It's like he's not ready to be, you know, a full-grown man and, you know, and handle his responsibilities and sit down some motherfucking way. He's enjoying, to me, it's like he's enjoying the limelight. He's enjoying the groupies, the new little young ones stepping on it. Because these niggas is all knocking on 40 years old. The, the, the dudes, too, now. Now, what you call his husband is, is about 50. Uh, um, Rashida's husband is damn near 50. I don't know what the fuck your ass is out here. Not only do you cheat on your wife, but nigga, you cheat on your wife, not strapped up, and now here comes some motherfucker talking about a baby? Nigga, all this shit is just sounding and looking so motherfucking disrespectful and crazy. I don't even know. Mama D is truly about the realest motherfucker on the show to me. But her antics is just looking like she on some old psychotic, twisted up in the head type shit, bringing... All kind of, I don't know what kind of different little man. That motherfucker be having coming in with Exhibit A. She get to coming in with all kind of dips and that. Now, I did like that little crown that she did give motherfucker, uh, what you call it, for the baby. That was beautiful. That was so cute. I was like, oh, my God, did you see this little crown? It was like in a little box and shit. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cute. But, uh, and I do like her. I like the realness about her. Um, and, uh, but I just... It seemed like sometimes she goes off her meds or, you know, or she just, you know, playing a role. Once again, it's poetic license, so they could just be playing a sketch, you know, I mean, playing out a scene. And so that could just be what it is, you know, and it's coming off on the audience like, whoa, especially certain people of a certain age is looking at this shit like, for real. But it got me like, okay, this is what my daughter is watching. This is what a lot of these impressionable young ladies that's really trying to get on on the internet, game, uh, Instagram, modeling, and, you know, they're watching all this kinds of stuff. 
And they looking at this shit like, oh my God, why? But but I got to give it to uh, Waka and Tammy. Now, they are doing it right. I really, really like them on the show. They need to have them keep recurring on the show because it's giving it some balance and some grounding. Whereas this man is trying to work on his getting with his wife. He has a relationship with his stepdaughter, as he calls his daughter. Man, that is commendable. His mama is a very classy lady. I like the way she get down, though she's in the hip-hop game, in which that's not a bad thing. That's what she does or whatever. And so, but still, it's a it's an aura of respect around her when I see her. So it's like, I like them. Um, who else on that motherfucker? I'm just not understanding. I'm just not understanding. I'm like, wow. And then when Tommy Mama came in, them motherfuckers was all sitting around. I was like, oh my God, what the fuck? Man, y'all making this motherfucker too goddamn out the way. I don't know. Maybe the kids is liking it. And if the kids are liking it, they're making money with it. Uh, undoubtedly, they are making money because, I am, I mean, they got my AdSense coins yesterday. Because I was, I, they, you know, every commercial came on. It was no problem. You know what I'm saying?